Strokes. So, which strokes are we talking about? Strokes on a tennis court, the swimming strokes, the breast stroke, the butterfly stroke, or strokes by a painter? No. I'm going to talk to you about brain strokes. Dr. Neem Sadiq, neurologist, neuropsychiatrist, specialist in regenerative medicine, founder and director of Plexus Neuro and Stem Cell Research Center, coming to you with another session on a very common topic, on a very common illness, brain stroke. The incidence of brain stroke, as per the WHO, is 15 million people every year. 15 million is a huge number. And what is more alarming than that is two-thirds of these people, that is 10 million people, either die or end up with permanent disability. Five million people die every year. Five million people end up being disabled. And five million people recover. What's a brain stroke? Why does this happen? Simple blood supply to the brain has to be uninterrupted. The brain gets the blood supply through the blood vessels. If this is continuous, then the oxygen supply to the brain is continuous and the brain functions without any problem. Now, due to some reason, if this supply is interrupted, then problems happen. Now, before we go into that, briefly, let us just look at the risk factors. The common risk factors for a stroke, which is also known as a paralytic attack or a brain stroke or a brain attack. Number one, obesity. Number two, diabetes. Number three, hypertension. Number four, heart disease and hyperlipidemia or a problem in cholesterol, um, high values of cholesterol. It affects people generally above 60 years of age, but then yes, even younger people can have. People who smoke and consume alcohol have a, stand a higher risk of getting a stroke. Because of these risk factors or sometimes even without these risk factors, stroke happens. I was talking to you some time back, if the blood supply is cut off or the oxygen is cut off to the brain, then the stroke ensues. So how does this happen? The blood carries the oxygen which goes continuously to the brain. Now for some reason, if there is an interruption here, so the supply stops here. From this this particular branch of the blood vessel, for instance, if this is supplying this part of the brain, the cells in this area are dead. And whatever function which corresponds to that area is lost. Now, this can happen because of two reasons. Now, these reasons could be either a clot which causes a blockage here or a bleed or a hemorrhage. Now, a clot can happen because of the thickened arteries or deposition of fatty substances here. So that's where the risk factors of having a very fat-rich diet, alcohol, smoking, all these things play a factor. The other reason could be a bleed where the blood vessel ruptures here there's a leakage of blood and beyond this point the blood is not flowing because of which that particular area of the brain gets damaged what will be the manifestations 
If you remember or if you have seen my earlier videos on Parkinson's, on epilepsy, on autism, I have been pointing out and bringing to your attention the importance of the functioning of the brain. Brain controls every single thing in our body, starting from the movement to the feeling, the sensation, the, the thoughts, the emotions, every, every single thing is controlled by the brain. And the brain, in the brain, there are specific areas which control specific functions. For example, now I will take you to the diagrammatic presentation as to how this happens. Over here, the purple color represents the region which controls the movement of the arms and the legs. The yellow color here represents the area for the face. The red color represents the speech center. The pink represents the memory, so on and so forth. Depending on which area is damaged, that particular function is lost. For instance, if somebody has an infarct covering this entire region, where the arm and the leg the face and the speech. So the patient will end up in weakness on one side of the body where his arm is weak, the leg is weak, the face is weak and the patient is unable to speak. If such a thing happens and it happens suddenly, that's the reason it's known as a stroke. It happens in a few seconds. When it happens, what are you going to do? That's the time when you have to remember FAST, F-A-S-T. F for the drooping of the face, A where there is weakness in the arms or the legs, S where there is a problem in the speech, either the speech is completely gone or it is not clear and T is where you do not waste any time. Call an ambulance, pick up any vehicle, do whatever, rush to the hospital as soon as possible. At the hospital, the doctor will do a diagnostic workup, find out the stroke was because of a bleed, a hemorrhage or a clot. And if the patient qualifies for a surgical procedure, the doctor might subject him to a procedure where the clot can be dissolved. Now once the clot is dissolved, the blood supply is restored and gradually the damaged cells will start to recover. And in case the patient is not eligible for a thrombolytic therapy, then he might be put on a conservative treatment. Now, at this point, what does plexus have to offer. What do we do here? Now besides the surgical approach, besides the conservative approach and of course you know after this the doctor will send the patient for a rehab, a physio and the other things. Now what we do over here at plexus is the area which is damaged, the cells which are dead are replaced by brand new cells. That is known as stem cell therapy. At Plexus, we do regenerative rehabilitation where from the bone marrow, the autologous stem cell therapy, from the bone marrow, we take out the mesenchymal stem cells. Now, these stem cells are introduced into the patient's body. Once these new cells go, they start repairing the damaged area and thereby gradually restoring the function which was lost. Now besides stem cells, we have a complete department of rehabilitation which includes physiotherapy, occupational therapy and speech therapy. A complete customized tailor-made program will restore the patient's movement, the patient's speech plus there would be some amount of cognitive problems as well, emotional problems as well, which will also be taken care of. 
Well, that is not exactly what Plexus specializes in. What we do much more than that is prevention. If you remember the risk factors, obesity, hypertension, hypercholesterolemia, where the cholesterol level is high, uh, alcohol, smoking, we have a complete lifestyle management program wherein we take care of these things. Like it is always said, prevention is better than cure. Now, if that can be done, well, the 15 million figure which the WHO was talking about could be changed, could be minimized. That's exactly what we are aiming at. Thank you very much for this session wherein we discussed a very, very important topic the brain stroke. Hope it was informative. If you guys have any comments, if you have any questions, if you have any queries, you can post them and I shall be glad to answer them. And please follow us on our uh, social media for our upcoming events. I'll be back very soon with yet another interesting topic. Till then, have a great evening. Bye-bye.